moved to Bangkok. I was trying to find a job. How have you made a living? We were forced to speak in English. How did it sound when you first arrived? Oh, mate. Hi, 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 hi. We're in East Asia now. I know for many people it's really uncomfortable. If you're thinking about working abroad, move first and then figure things out. I might, I might get cancelled for that. <laughs> Welcome back to Evolve. Hi everyone, I'm Clemente, Nomad Digital Marketer. I'm also part of the Evolve team. How has your journey been as a nomad and how have you made a living? So when I graduated university, at the time I had some savings. I decided to, to move to Bangkok. At the time I just thought like I'm just going to go there and then I'll figure it out. When you overthink, sometimes there is a risk of just not acting. So yeah, I just, you know, moved to Bangkok and I was trying to find a job on the spot literally linkedin every day job applications and ideally i was you know looking for something where i could work remotely a friend of mine who works for a couple of youtube channels and uh, he offered to take me uh, in for an internship we worked together for a year very good experience working in the in the youtube space that allowed me to travel while I was working because you know it was remote work. Just a point on the whole fear thing I think we all go through similar thought processes where we're not really sure whether we should stay in the stability that might be an office job or in your hometown staying with the family the nest as we call it and when you break away sometimes we use that word like it's risk-taking but I think when we're privileged uh, to be from you know we, we have at least a certain amount of runway as you said What's actually the greater risk? Leaving the nest or staying, knowing that you're not really fully fulfilled and happy in your job, which is really difficult. So sometimes breaking out of that, I think if I, if I hadn't have broken the mold, how would I feel in 10 or 15 years or 20 years knowing that I hadn't taken those risks? Because you don't really regret the things that you do. It's more the things that you didn't do. So that's what gave me that motivation of, you know what, it's fine. Let's say you venture out, things don't go to plan. We're still here and you, you would have learned key lessons through that process. Guys, if you're getting any value from this, we would really appreciate if you could subscribe and hit the like button. How do you know so many languages and how do you work seamlessly, interchangeably? I mean, in sentences, one moment we're speaking French, then it's Spanish. Now he's schooling us in Korean. Uh, where, where did this passion for languages come from? Especially as well that he's also familiar with a bit of Cockney English as well. He's, he's a bit of a geezer, yes, as mate. we sometimes say. Yes, mate. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, tell us the language background. My mother is French, my father Spanish, so I grew up speaking two languages, and then English, that came later. You know, actually, when I was in high school, my English was terrible. I remember <laughs> the teacher was just laughing at me. I was a huge fan, uh, still today, of, uh, of R&B, right? So I was just listening to... American music, right? That, that helped me so much, literally. Like, I've learned more with music. Not always the good lyrics, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that helped me, really. So that's, that's something I would um, advise people to do. When I moved to England, when I did that language course, my English just went to another level, literally. You know, the, the teachers were amazing. You know, the school, the school was called Embassy. Spending time with international students where we were forced to speak in English, that really helped me. And then, of course, studying, attending university, having to also improve my academic English. That was very important. All this together, you know, helped me to, to uh, you know, speak better English. I was working at that language school. I was an activity leader. So that's where Clem and I met. When I first met Clem, I can actually vouch and say that when he says his English wasn't that good, he's, he's not lying, basically. So when I first met him, we only spoke in French. Like that, I had just came back from my year abroad, so I was fresh in, uh, you know, French mode, and I wanted to practice at any, um, uh, you know, opportunity I had. But then year by year, he just stopped slowly replying to me in French. Mm and only would reply to me in English, to the point now where I'm quite frustrated because I speak to him in French and I want him to help me and correct me or Spanish. He just replies in English. <laughs> and the level above that is that he spent time in our hometown. So he's not only picked up like the international English that people speak in London, he really immersed in our hometown. And it, it's crazy now that he knows the local expressions and he's able to banter with us, uh, you know, our humour. So maybe you can tell the viewers, because I know when you first arrived in our hometown, 
<laughs> Your reaction, I wish we'd recorded his face when he first heard my family speak. Uh, t tell the viewers about that if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, just uh, before I answer, like, are you having a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Good. The first time uh, when I visited Rafa's hometown, I had to ask people to repeat what they were saying, you know, many, many times. That's all about immersion, right? When, once you spend time with people, you just start to get it. How did it sound when you first arrived? <laughs> I, might, I might get cancelled for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're with two Brits, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> right. So literally, in complete honesty, all I could understand was, Oh, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> 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 oh, mate, uh, you know. <laughs> Before moving to, to England, I was not aware that there were so many different accents. A lot of people actually don't realise that, especially students who are beginning their journey in the English language. They sound, uh, the, the audio that they would listen to sounds like Rafa and I receive pronunciation, right? RP, southern accent. There are so many different accents, so it's just an interesting fact for our international audience out there. But I'm curious, Clem, because I've met so many people who kind of shy away from really diving in and mixing with lo local people and learning local expressions. So was that hard for you or was it easy? When it comes to this, it can really depend on the environment that you're in. Of course, your personality. For me, it was, it was actually very easy. I had such an amazing experience uh, in England. When you want to you know, learn a language and really get, you know, for example, in England, the banter, at some point you will have to make an effort you know, to immerse yourself. Don't be afraid to ask them to repeat or to explain what they're talking about because if you don't, then you're never gonna get it. People might think that you understand and if you don't and don't say anything, then you're not gonna learn. So I think that's also a big step for some people. You say something in French, I correct you. I say something in English, they correct me. Don't be afraid of making the mistake and don't be afraid to Asking for explanation, asking to repeat, that's crucial in the, in the learning process, you know, it's just part of it. We're in East Asia now. It happens a lot where people in, in this part of the world sometimes just feel like it's almost rude to ask someone to explain a joke. It doesn't only happen here, it happens uh, elsewhere as well, where they'll hear like a British person make a joke and even though they don't, really, they don't understand it, people kind of laugh. I get that in certain situations, in like a really important conference or like call or really important meeting, you can't just put your hand up and say, excuse me, and like disrupt the entire flow of the meeting for the explanation. But if you've got close friends, really try. I know for many people it's really uncomfortable, but say, could you just explain that joke, please? Because I, I didn't really understand it. After you get over that millisecond of awkwardness, mm. you're gonna learn so much about the culture. And that's why Clemente, with us together, the banter, because we, we use the French, the Spanish, and the English humor together, because we dove in. If you just increase the amount of times you say why, you're going to be way more fluent. In the moment, people just get their phone out and they search. Not, I'm not just talking about languages, I just mean anything. How much is 1,000 Korean won in pounds? Or how old is this uh, palace? We ask questions usually, but it's easy to ask the phone, right? Because you don't have to actually speak to someone. The phone doesn't judge you for not knowing something. The English language students who I coach, I always leave them a message at the end of my feedback saying, stay curious. What advice would you give to the former Clem? 10 years ago who hadn't traveled and learned uh, you know these languages korean and advanced so well in english what would you give to him if you haven't tried there's no way of being sure if it's possible or not if you're thinking about working abroad look for the job that you're you're interested in if you can do just like me move first and then figure things out it's not always the best solution but um, just try try something you know just try it just do it if you have any any goals don't limit yourself thinking that those are not achievable that they're only for other people try and then you'll figure out along the way if it's possible or not and if it's not possible you will have learned something so it will not be a loss the loss is when you want to do something and you don't when you don't try keep trying i have a lot of things to learn like everyone it's just important to take a chance you know and just believe in yourself thank you so much for tuning in once again and if you found this episode useful please like and subscribe as usual and stay tuned for more motivational content Shukran. merci Hehehe <laughs>